All right there, it's Tim G5TM back for another video. Now, if you're new to the channel, then it'll be great if you can click subscribe and that notification bell to tell you of any future videos. If you're somebody who's been with me for a while or just joined recently and you come back for another video, great to have you back. Now, what have I been doing in the last week or two? Well, I've been looking into uh, different designs for vertical antennas. And in the next few weeks, I'm putting out a few videos looking at different types of vertical antennas and the sorts of things we should be considering when we're looking to set up a vertical antenna, either at home or in the field. Now, the, an the antenna I'm looking at today is something I've come across online. And I'll give credit for who it is in a minute who's come up with this idea, or at least who's published the actual design for it. It's basically a, um, well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a single radiating element, but with two pairs of elevated radials, making it, in effect, a, a dual band elevated vertical. Now, what makes this antenna a, a useful design is especially if you're using, say, a rather thin fiberglass pole to uh, to elevate the antenna say out in the field or temporarily at home now usually if you want to run a, uh, a two uh, a, a double dual band vertical in that sense you need to have two radiating elements as well as two pairs of elevated verticals now in this case we can get away with that because of the off center fed nature of the design of the vertical itself so that makes it easier to put up in the field. You just need to have the ability to put out two pairs of elevated radials at 180 degrees from each other. But we'll look at that in a second. Now, the example I'm going to talk you through today is uh, an antenna for 10 and 15 meters. Now, if we look at the actual outline of the design itself, then. So uh, it's an off-center fed design. We've got one vertical wire, which is cut as a quarter way for 12 meters. Notice it's not 10 or 15 with a pair of radials for each of the other two bands, that's 10 and 15 meters. On 10 meters, the combined vertical and radial length is pretty close to being the standard quarter wave elevated vertical with radials. Because don't forget, when you've got the um, a standard elevated quarter wave vertical, then effectively the radials and the, uh, uh, each radial, uh, plus the, the, uh, the um, the vertical radiating element if you add take one of the radials plus that you come to around a half wavelength okay so you've got the quarter wave and then you've got the quarter wave in terms of the radial so 10 meters is about the same now looking at 15 then and on 15 though the combined vertical and radial length is a little longer than the standard quarter wave so that's about seven meters 7.1 meters and the antenna is modeled as being fed about 5.2 meters above the ground and the radial is about a 45 degree angle so the reason why radials are often at 45 degrees with elevated quarter waves is to make sure we try to bring the feed point impedance as close to 50 ohms as we can. And having the feed point, that's the feed point is where obviously the radials meet the, um, you know, the, the actual feed point there where the coax gets attached. You've got the radials coming up, they've got the vertical coming down to that point. And at 5.2 metres above the ground, it represents a height which is achievable for most people if they're going to work portable. So the chap that came up with this is a guy called KKO. It's actually a guy called Dick, whose call sign is KK4OBI. And he published, he's published quite a few articles on vertical antennas and dipoles. Um, and effectively what he's done with this design, he's come up with a, uh, as you can see with this table here, look, he's come up with a variety of designs incorporating this off center fed uh, principle, which allows you to have uh, effectively a dual band elevated vertical with just one uh, vertical element. So if we look at that, uh, what looks like a fairly complicated table initially, if you look at the top, you've got the, the uh, what we call the initial frequencies. You've got 6, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 13, 40 going across the top. Um, now, that is basically the uh, frequency that we cut the vertical element for. So, in this case, if you remember, for 10 and 15 metres, we've cut... Uh, the uh, the vertical for being a quarter wave on 12 meters. So referring back to the table, if you look at where I've circled 12 meters at the top, if you go down, you'll see 20, uh, halfway down, you've got 24.9 megahertz. That's what you cut that particular antenna for. So the first part, the top part of the antenna, the vertical element is effectively like a 12 meter vertical. But then what you then do is to cut two pairs of radials, one to try and get your resonance uh, on 10 meters, and one on 15. So you've got a pair of uh, radials for 10 meters. Now you notice in this case, if you look just above where it's got 24.9 in the middle, you've got circle there 28.272. And that's the frequency for 10 meters. And looking across, you can see I've drawn an arrow 
to radial length 0 0.9. So according to this principle, if you cut the radial length to be 0 0.9 of their usual length, that's 9 tenths of their usual length on 10 meters, then that combination should give you resonance on the round off frequency of about 28.3 megahertz. Similarly, if you go down a bit, where I put, uh, we can see on the left hand side I've added 15 meters, and you can see an arrow going across. You can see there, look, that we cut the 15 meter radials for around 1.4 times their usual length. And if you re look across again, you can see again circled 21.193. So effectively, uh, what we now have is a vertical element cut as usual as a quarter wave on 12. We've got two radials cut for 10 meters at about 0 0.9 their usual length and then two more radials cut for 15 meters at around 1.4 times their usual length. So you've got an off-center-fed vertical for 10 meters and also one for 15 as well. Now I've used a MMANA to come up with this design and if effectively what I found is, looking at that, uh, you can see the drawing there, look, uh, what I found is that the radials need to be a bit shorter than what's in that table. Obviously, um, you know, the things never work out completely the same, but uh, there's a little bit of a difference. So basically for, um, where are we? Yes, for, for 10 meters, we need two 2.3 meter long uh, radials. That's about seven and a half feet. And for 15, two 4.3 meter long radials, which are just over 14 feet each. So let's check out both the bands in terms of the SWR curve and also the far field plot as well. So looking first of all, we'll, we'll take 10 meters first of all then. And you can see here, look, that the SWR plot is pretty typical, isn't it? According to MMANA, we've got resonance at about 28.46, which is smack in the middle of the SSB phone band. And, uh, you know, we've got quite a broad SWR curve. We're under 1.5 to 1. Uh, from well well under the foam band there up to about uh ooh, where are we about 28.75 i'd estimate that and in fact we do have a, uh, a 560 uh, kilohertz bandwidth of less than 1.5 to 1 and over a uh, well over a megahertz for uh SWR of uh, less than 2 to 1 um so what we're seeing there is um quite typical of a of a 10 meter vertical if we check out the the far field plot then and we can see in the far field plot, look, that we've got a, a typical sort of looking far field plot for 10 metres. And if we uh, compare that, if I just look at my notes, I tell you as well, if we compare that then with the, um, the conventional one, so the red one is the off centre fed vertical and con the conventional, well, that means basically a 10 metre uh, two radial elevated quarter wave fed at 5.2 metres above the ground, the same height as this, that's in blue. Uh, our one, the offset defender, is in red. On the right, you see the far field plot is pretty similar. The conventional one just has the edge a little bit around uh, through 10 to uh, 20 degrees, but there's not much in it there at all. And in fact, interestingly, on the left, you've got the azimuth pattern. You can see that the off center fed is a bit less omnidirectional. And I think there's a bit of interaction there with the, uh, with, with the two, uh, two radials for 15 meters. But um, overall, uh, pretty good stacks up pretty well against the conventional 10 meter elevated quarter wave let's look at 15 now now 15 has had to make a bit more of a sacrifice in terms of the way it's designed because you know if you notice that the uh, the measurements for 10 meters are pretty pretty near to a standard elevated quarter wave now for 15 this isn't quite the case because we've got much longer radials and a much shorter vertical element so if we look at the swr plot together you can see we haven't got as low an swr uh, at best, uh, at best tune as we do, as we've got on ten meters, but we're still well under two to one throughout the whole of the of the foam band. And I, I, I probably wager that I'll be under two to one for the whole of the of the actual band itself. Um, quite workable SWR. Uh, we're below one one point eight to one or below for the whole of the foam band. I'm quite happy with that. So there's a bit more of a compromise on 15 meters. So there's the far field plot. Look, uh, some nice gain. Uh, three point minus 3.4 dB at five degrees off the horizon. That's pretty nice actually. And if we then compare it to the conventional version of for 15 meters, as if we're feeding a uh, a normal quarter wave uh, vertical with two quarter wave elevated radials of 5.2 meters above the ground, there's very little difference at all between those two. Our off center fed vertical is in red and the conventional one is in blue. So it pretty much stacks up quite well against the, uh, well, the conventional version. So overall, an interesting experiment, I think, and one I'm really keen to replicate at home to see if I can get a tune. 
um, it should work. It's great to see that uh, that sort of different version, isn't it, of, of being able to get a dual band out of a single vertical element like that. Um, as I say, it's a bit of a niche design. It's useful if you, um, as I say, have a fiberglass pole where it's going to be you know, a bit tricky sometimes if you're going to put it up and down to, have to be able to hold two uh, elements going up like that. Um, I guess one way you could do that, actually, is to use maybe a ladder line. So if you've got 450 ohm ladder line, you could do it, but they're very, they're about an inch away from each other. So actually tuning will be a bit more tricky. Um, but this is just another way of doing it and quite an interesting uh, design. The one caveat is you'll need to be able to choke pretty well right at the feed point because you do have an off center fed design. Uh, you've got gr much greater chance of common mode current back on that coax. Uh, and in fact, even with an, an, a resonant normal, if you like, elevated quarter wave vertical, because you've got the, the radials coming past the coax, you still need to make sure you probably choke it quite well anyway. So with any elevated uh, uh, vertical system like this, with you know, elevated radials, you need to make sure that you choke it very well at the feed point. But as it's a, an off center fed version, that's even more of an important consideration. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope that's of use to you and uh, a bit of interest anyway. If you like what you see, as I said, click subscribe. You've got a chance to do that there. And my next video is coming up over there. Take care and enjoy the bands and we'll catch you again for another one. Bye-bye now.